But I had a hypothesis that this was not dead. You know, it's, it was going to go through a cycle. It had gone through a hype cycle. It needs to calm down. Again, we fall like 85%. And my hypothesis was that macro and crypto were going to meet because I came into this space saying we need this asset. And the next recession, once the money printing starts again and the unease over who owns what surfaces again, it's going to come to importance. Raul Powell, the founder and CEO of Real Vision and global macro investor, is a prominent crypto investor and macro expert. In a recent interview, Powell discusses the drawdown in the cryptocurrency market and the next phase of mass adoption for the industry. Despite the significant price declines in the prices of most top cryptocurrencies, Powell states that crypto assets are a need for the world. Over the week, at least two major central banks announced some form of quantitative easing to reduce the pressure on their respective economies. On Wednesday, the Bank of England announced it was going to buy back a potentially limitless amount of long-term bonds to stabilize the markets. According to reports, the latest round of currency debasement was to keep pension funds solvent. On Thursday, Germany also released its official consumer price index data. The report shows that the country's inflation jumped 10.9% in September compared to the same period in 2021. It also rose by 8.8% on a monthly basis, the highest inflation rate Germany has seen since 1951. In September, the country's energy prices also climbed by 44% compared to the same period in 2021. Both countries, like the United States, are still reeling from the stimulus programs of the last two years. Germany especially was a leader in rolling out stimulus packages during the pandemic. Between February and May 2020, it released over $840 billion for stimulus and lending. This was in addition to a wage subsidy program, a three-month payment moratorium on German-based consumer loans, and another $146 billion stimulus package in June 2020. But German bureaucrats are now planning another bailout program due to the double-digit inflation. On Thursday, officials revealed another $195 billion relief package and a price cap on natural gas. The Japanese and Chinese governments have also previously announced similar bailout programs, and there is no telling which country will be next. It is now evident that the continued survival of these economies depends on emergency bailout programs that only gloss over the underlying problem. In his interview, Pal explains that the realization of this unsavory reality will drive more investors towards cryptocurrencies and other digital assets. We will now take you to Raul Pal's interview. Please watch, like, and share this video. Also, ensure you drop your comments and observations in the comments section and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks and enjoy the video. So 2020 comes along, March 2020, Bitcoin drops. It's in this beautiful chart pattern. I get long again, this time irresponsibly long. I put 100% of my liquid net worth into it. And, um, and off we went. And uh, then my hypothesis built out as I started to understand much deeper about Ethereum. Um, understanding network effects, how to price cryptocurrencies because the market was floundering to do that. And I, I figured out this Metcalfe's Law thing, started doing a lot of work on that, understanding how these networks grow, what it all means. And then, you know, my privileged position in the middle of Real Vision and the middle of the entire kind of Web3 community has allowed me to learn from the best of the best about where the hell this is all going. And as, as we talked about earlier on, the tokenization of culture, you know, all sorts of things from ticketing through to the metaverse is all ahead of us and people are building fast when have you ever found an institution who buys at the low what yeah. we need is fomo right most of them i mean i've spoken to a lot of them and you know giants like apollo they're all over the space the giants uh, giant pension funds giant endowments the big sovereign wealth funds the middle east everybody's all over it the reason they haven't allocated a lot, a lot of them have done VC first because hmm. it's easy to get through investment committees. It's just like a technology investment. Um, but then they've struggled with product. So, you know, they can't invest in individual hedge funds. It's just too hard for them because, you know, they can't do due diligence on custody risk, hmm. DeFi risk, stuff like that. They just don't know how to do it yet. It's too new for them. So, you know, fund of fund products like you guys have built and I've built, you know, those are going to be the kind of products that they need, much like it was for family offices. So I think they are all super interested. I know that hedge funds is the next part of the space that they will come into, because I've seen this rule book, this playbook many times before. Um, they're all doing the work on it. 
and you need that thing that makes them not feel like idiots, which is they need the price to go up. And I know that's stupid, <laughs> but it is what it is, right? That's why family offices and high net worth investors have been much better at capturing the alpha in this space than institutions because they don't get fired. They don't get so, fired for doing the wrong thing. Um, and regulation at the margin helps. Family offices and high net worth tend to be uh, more risk taking because they're in control of their own capital. So the fiduciary duty that they owe to themselves. So they will say, I understand it's not fully regulated yet, but I will take the risk. And they've been compensated for that risk by doing so. Institutions can't do that because their fiduciary duty to these millions of people and you know all of that kind of stuff. So regulatory clarity helps them. And so people look at this regulation space and really we need it if you want adoption. This libertarian ideal of nobody's going to regulate our money, this is our new digital yeah. money, you can't do it, is a fantasy because we all live in a physical jurisdiction. And the physical jurisdiction wants its share of taxes because you benefit, you get benefit from being a societal member. Mm. Now, if you move elsewhere, I live in the Cayman Islands, so I don't pay direct taxes. Sure, we have taxes on import duties and other stuff. They always find a way to get money from you. But um, but that's the thing is if you live in a country, you can't avoid taxes. They want to make sure they get their fair share because don't forget the world is pretty much bankrupt right now mm. and they need to make sure that they collect as much taxes as possible. So mm. um, I think regulation is a good thing. I think it's coming. I think the space where the battle is going to get drawn up really is DeFi because DeFi needs KYC AML um, and it can't by its very structure. So we're seeing people spinning up new institutional KYC, AML versions of DeFi um, protocols, um, which I think is useful. So that means we'll end up with a bifurcated world like, you know, some of your funds and in fact, half the world's funds are in the Cayman Islands. Why is that? Nobody's avoiding taxes. You're doing it because it's a tax neutral jurisdiction that allows mm. a fair and clear regulatory framework for any dispute, legal dispute, but it also allows international investors to pay their own taxes in their home country. It makes it easy. So can you do, so will we have offshore DeFi and onshore DeFi? For sure, because you can't impose US DeFi restrictions on a, an investor in, in South Africa. You know, I, so, I th so I think we will figure out different ways of doing it and there'll be bifurcated markets, but institutions will get what they need, which is they need compliance so they can't get taken to court. Many prominent cryptocurrency investors have touted the importance of institutional investors in the crypto space. According to market experts like Michael Saylor, Kevin O'Leary, and Mike McGlone, big money investors like family offices, sovereign wealth funds, and pension funds could trigger exponential growth in crypto asset prices. In his interview, Powell shares similar sentiments, urging investors to put aside their aversion to these often centralized entities as their activities will benefit all categories of investors in the industry. What is magic about this space? is we all get to own a part of the network. So whatever they do on the space is gonna benefit us if we own parts of the network. That's by owning the tokens. I don't really care. As long as I've got my stake of the network, however the network is built out and whoever builds on top of it. So what they're saying is, we like the network, we like the technology, we want to build on top of the technology and we want to build the ability to custody and transfer assets, right? That was my hypothesis from day one that that was gonna happen, it's just taken time. And I've spoken to the London Stock Exchange, I've spoken to everybody. They're all going to do it eventually. I've spoken to Dubai Stock Exchange. They're all going to do it. We've seen the European Investment Bank, the EIB, issue bonds on Ethereum. They're all testing it. So my hypothesis has been most traditional assets are about 200 to $300 trillion in market cap, whether that's real estate, bonds, equities, um, and my guess is this will be the same because it's going to capture a share of a bunch of that. Um, so, you know, 13 trillion. Yep. Yeah, add that onto the, into the mix that gets us to $200 trillion of market cap. It's coming without question. The best thing is own the bloody token. You can, you can say, well, we don't want the institutions coming in. Well, you might as well profit from it. Own the token. So I own the ecosystem, invest in the hedge funds, do whatever, capture the alpha and the yes. beta of the space. What do you think about Raul Powell's interview? Do you agree that only regulation and a significant price recovery will bring in more institutional investors? What do you think would trigger such recovery? Please drop your replies, comments, and observations in the comments section below. 
Also, be sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and check out our other crypto-related videos from the industry's most brilliant minds. Thanks for watching.